in like one minute. At 12. Welcome, I'm Joan Plisco, the Community Sustainability Director here at Pearlstone, a 180-acre retreat, conference, and education center in Reisterstown, Maryland. And behind me, you can see four buildings that have solar panels on them, rooftop solar on our lodge buildings here. And I want to give you a few quick facts about the rooftop solar and then pass this over to two people that made this happen. One is Yakira Manella, the CEO of Pearlstone, and the other is Rob Freer, the donor who so kindly and generously helped us finance this. First of all, this solar installation is 57 kilowatts. It's 10,000 square feet on our rooftops and will provide 75,000 kilowatt hours each year of energy. Over the 25 year life of these panels, we'll realize a savings of $9,500 each year. The solar panels are connected to our sustainability and stewardship program, which I am going to ask Yakir to explain to you. Welcome Yakir and welcome Rob. Thank you so much, Joan. Thank you everybody for being with us today. What a beautiful day it is here. March 30th, blue skies and it's really just a banner day like eco carnival kind of situation here between the solar panels and the prescribed burn that we are in the midst of it's really really a special day and i'm so excited and proud and honored rob to be with you uh to talk about this we did it you did it we did it this is really here um it's really such a a moment um for for really decades that we've wanted to do this and and rob you know we have an amazing board we're so grateful to all our supporters on the board and at the Associated. And as soon as I met you, I knew, and when we started talking about this, you really you really got it, like why we'd want to do this. So we'd just love to hear from your own perspective, like why was this important? Why, why do you want to make this happen? Well, thank you. First of all, thank you, Yakir and Joan, for what, what you do here at Pearlstone. I mean, it's this is really an amazing institution. More people need to know about it. Not only is it an amazing retreat center, but the emphasis on sustainability and re really setting an example for the local community and for the folks that visit here is, is really phenomenal. And it's really an example that should be duplicated throughout the country and really throughout the world in institutions like this. So I don't remember the question, but I'm personally extremely excited about this rooftop solar system here at Pearlstone. Um, this is actually the fifth roof rooftop solar system that I'm personally responsible for in my uh, professional, personal, and now finally philanthropic life. So I'm really excited about this and I hope it's not the last. I've been interested in solar really be even before it was cool. When I was in college, I researched passive solar energy. And um, you know, rooftop um, solar is, is the most uh, efficient, and I'm, I'm sorry, the most sustainable form of energy. Um, it's emissionless, obviously, it's silent. And it just sits up there, no moving parts for, for dozens of years, and uh, offsets the use of fossil fuels. Uh, one point I, I kind of really directly want to make about solar in our current economic environment is every watt of solar energy that's installed, watt for watt, offsets the dirtiest power that we have, which is coal. Um, there's a direct offset for several reasons. Coal is the most expensive and the dirtiest power, and those plants are kept online just for really high demand times. So, for example, on a, uh, a hot summer day and a summer evening when everyone cranks up their air conditioners, that's when they bring this, the coal plants online. 
that's when solar is the best. So watt for watt, you don't see it, you don't appreciate it, but you should understand that that is offsetting coal emissions, the dirtiest power that's out there from a climate change perspective and from an environmental health perspective and an environmental justice perspective from where coal plants are located. So that's the beauty of this. I really want to get that message out there when people drive up to Pearlstone, they appreciate that beautiful message that's being sent by those solar panels on the roof. As they arrive here, they're going to learn even more about sustainability and the wonderful things that Yakir and, and Joan are doing here at Pearlstone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rob. You know, it reminds me, on a simple level, when we teach Teva, when we have kids come out here, we say, we teach composting. And we try to get them the picture like, right now we're throwing our food into the trash and that is becoming waste in a landfill. When we compost, it's not just that we don't produce waste, it's that we use that food, compost, and then we create this beautiful soil to go into our garden. So it's going from such a negative to such a positive. And I think what you're describing here with, with the transition from coal to solar is so beautiful. And when we think about at Pearlstone, why, why do we want to do this? You know, our, our partners and our friends at Chazon say, we are in a climate crisis and Jewish tradition compels us to respond. We are in a climate crisis. It's a global planetary crisis. And it's creation, it's God's creation, it's every human being on the planet. We have 10 years to totally revolutionize and transform our energy economy. Now this rooftop system by itself is not going to do that. But we, made our, we gotta make sure that every rooftop we can, every energy source we can, every public facing institution, and certainly every institution that is operating from a moral, spiritual, ethical framework, and I certainly include the Jewish community in that, we need to do everything we possibly can to model and to embody that sustainable change. And so this is a huge step in that direction. We're really, really proud of it. When people come into our retreat center, there will be a, uh, a meter where you'll be able to see kids, adults, everybody that's at Pearlstone will be able to see the energy being produced. And our hope is that it inspires and activates people to do this to your rooftops, at your synagogue, at your church, at your office. Like Rob said, I didn't know you were a serial sol yeah. solar <laughs> solar guy, but it makes sense, right? We should be doing this everywhere. And this is that's why you can't quite tell from this video, but when you walk up to Pearlston, you can't miss it. It's right here, and that's a big part of the message. And I wonder if you could talk more about, like, how could people do this, not just on an institutional level, but we were talking about neighborhood, sort of like what, what other things can people do as homeowners or just individuals, right? Well, the price of solar has come down dramatically over the past 10 years, and it's, it's really reached a point of grid parity where it's economic. Um, if you have a roof, a nice roof that faces more or less south, you could, you could look into putting a solar system on your home. And by the nature of solar, it kind of needs to be distributed. Um, it needs to be on every rooftop that can possibly accommodate solar. So people can put direct rooftop on, direct solar onto the rooftop. That's one thing people can do, and there are ways to finance that to make it economic. And also, if you do not have a rooftop that's that's um, that where you can put solar, maybe you live in an apartment or some sort of communal housing, or your roof, you might live in a wooded area and your roof just isn't good for it. There is some, something new called community solar, where you can actually buy. Uh, uh, subscribe to a solar project that's being installed somewhere where there is good sun and effectively you are it's exactly the same as you having solar on your roof you're subscribing to a project that's specifically installed and they need to sell that solar to people that will offset their use of electricity so anyone can participate in community solar there's a great company here locally which is one of the best community solar companies in the region called neighborhood sun and uh, people can, can look them up. There's other community solar projects. Anyone can put solar on their roof or virtually put solar on their roof through community solar. So it really needs to be, you know, every home, institution, if you have a, like Yakir like said, an institution that you have some involvement with, business. If you have a roof, look into solar. It really needs to be distributed. We need to dramatically increase the amount of solar that's being installed every year. Ironically, in 2020, 43% of the new electricity capacity installed in the country was solar, and something around 35% was wind, and unfortunately 20% is still fracked gas. We've got to, we have to squeeze out that fracked gas. We need to get the solar up to 50, 60%, and the wind up to 40, 50%, and we need to squeeze out the fracked gas. That's dirty and bad for the climate, and bad for the environment in so many ways. So more people need to do this. Everyone needs to think about doing this. Amen. Oh, I'm in. And I think in a, in a prior uh, Sundial Solar Schmooze, we heard from 
uh, what's his name? Uh, we heard from Gary Skolnick Gary of Skolnick. Neighborhood Sun, who Pearlstone has a partnership with. So if you're interested in community solar, we'll put that in the chat. It's nsunsolar.com forward slash Pearlstone. And we really want to thank Gary and our partners in Neighborhood Sun. As Rob was saying, it's critical. Everybody who has a roof, hopefully people have, have roofs, um, and, and everybody can participate in solar. And beyond just uh, individual homeowners or tenants or anybody that has a utility bill participating in community solar, there's even larger institutional scale projects that we hope to do here and that we're working with our amazing partners at the Associated to make happen in our Jewish community here in Baltimore. First, we should say this project itself would never have happened without the generosity and support of Rob, but also uh, with our partners and their support at the Associated. Uh, this is a brand new roof. Often rooftops, depending on how old they are, need to be replaced in order to make uh, solar solar installations happen in a make in a long term sustainable way. So, really want to thank our partners at the Associated for their support with with the new rooftop. And we are working towards on this campus. Uh, later today, we'll be seeing part of the campus in prescribed burn meadow restoration fires. Um, in a future part uh, of the campus, we will be. We are, we are hoping, we're, we're looking to raise dollars, raise support to do a ground mount solar field, uh, several acres um, that will really produce significant solar power, not on a rooftop, just ground mount. And we actually want that to be a solar pasture. So underneath the solar panels, you'll find sheep grazing. The solar panels provide the sheep lots of shade and the sheep actually graze uh, the, the grass and the pasture so that you don't get trees and bushes growing so high that they shade out the solar panels. Never try that with goats. Goats are no good. They'll eat the wires. They'll eat anything you let them near. The sheep it works with. So we want to have a solar pasture on site. Um, but that's more in the future. This year in 2021, we are so proud and inspired by our friends at the Associated and every agency of the Associated who has together committed to a 20 year solar farm. It's gonna be, I believe, over 10 acres of industrial rooftops in Baltimore City that will be providing 50% of the energy used by every, every agency of the Associated Jewish Community Federation of Baltimore. That is revolutionary. We actually had a session on this in a national Jewish climate fest uh, about a month ago that federations from around the country are looking at this model to really, really power up solar power and renewable energy in a big way for Jewish communities. Pearlstone has committed to use 75% of our energy from that offsite solar farm uh, that will be located in Baltimore City that's going live later in 2021. And that 75% plus this rooftop solar, plus the ground mount solar, will get us to 100% renewable energy, 100% solar. So stay with us, we are gonna get there. And I wonder, Rob, when you think about that, you know, it's not gonna happen right away, but we have taken a huge step right now, and we are thinking about what, how we can get there. And when you zoom out and you think three years from now, five years from now, you know, or more, how does the vision of, of this project, but not beyond this project, sort of impact what you hope to see for Pearlstone, for the Jewish community, and for the world? Well, thanks, Yakir, for everything you're doing. And the, I think the, one of the great impacts of this is, is trying to leverage this project. It's great to have solar on your roof at home, but one of the best things about it is your neighbors see it. They drive by and they say, wow, those guys have solar. You know, they could afford it, and they're doing something for the environment. Maybe I can. And Pearlstone can, can really do that on steroids with, in a normal year, and please God, next year, <laughs> Pearlstone will be back to 20,000 visitors a year who represent, you know, come from communities, you know, throughout the region and even further away. Uh, they represent institutions, churches, groups. They represent individuals, families, people come pick up their kids here. Um, and, and I would love to see this leverage to the point where people would say, hey, wow, I just saw solar at Pearlstone and they had this really cool meter and maybe the kids come home and tell their parents about it. Or the, you know, the member of the church goes back and talks to their sustainability committee about it. And I would love to see that we, we really, I guess it's hard to measure that, but it would be really beautiful to, to feel that, that we are leveraging this into more and more solar systems being installed. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I think about uh, Passover, that we're here now celebrating this special holiday. Everybody's enjoying their matzah, I'm sure, right? <laughs> Our kids call it the cardboard, the flavored cardboard. Um, but it's really about, right, it's about that sense of memory and identity where we say in the Seder that every generation has to see as if we ourselves uh, have left Egypt. 
um, and that we have the sense of freedom, that we don't take it for granted, and that with that freedom comes that responsibility. Like we say at the beginning of the Seder, this is the bread of affliction, let all who are com hungry come and eat. Rob, you spoke about climate justice, right? And how where those dirty power plants were located disproportionately impacted and created huge public health disparities in, in minority uh, black and brown neighborhoods, right? So there is a justice element to this, and there's a way in which this holiday is not only gives us a sense to celebrate the spring on the sunny day and renewal and freedom, but also asks us to really accept the responsibility that comes with freedom. And when we think about, we know, we can't unknow the science around climate, right? We can't, we, we, we Jewish uh, tradition forbids us to, to sort of ignore that knowledge. We have to, we have to face it and we have to step into uh, responsibility to do something about it. And that's what this place is about. That's what you're doing so, so um, inspirationally, Rob, for me and I think for everybody here. And as we look to, to, to behind us, we can actually see some of the smoke rising from the, from the fire. We are going to, to see that practice as well. And I wonder, you know, when we see in the same day on the same land, a practice like the solar panels, a practice like the restoration fire, you know, even as we come out of this pandemic, Rob, if, it, if I didn't know better, I would start to feel hope. <laughs> I would start to feel some joy and excitement that we are going to come out of this thing and we are going to be uh, strong and we are going to get there. You know? So, Rob, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any, any, any closing thoughts, anything else you want to share? Um, just really briefly, I mean, on the, the Jewish message, yeah. uh, of course, there's the message of Tikkun Olam, repairing the world. Nothing could be more direct in repairing the world than installing a rooftop solar system to offset, you know, coal and, and reduce climate, uh, greenhouse gases. So that's a very direct thing we're doing. And the, the message of Passover is just beautiful about we were slaves, we were oppressed people, we suffered plagues. And what can we do now? What can we do now for other people, for the world? And this is, a, I think, a great step forward for Pearlstone and for the Baltimore Jewish community. So thank you, Yakir and Joan, for everything you're doing here at Pearlstone. Amen. Thank you, Rob. It's such an honor to be here with you. So grateful to you, Joan, for your tremendous leadership and to everybody for joining us. Join, please. Great. Thank you all for sharing this sundial schmooze with us. We're going to head back up to the fire, and later this afternoon, around 3 o'clock, we're going to meet some of the folks that are working the fire, learn about what it takes to be part of that team. So please stay with us or rejoin us. See you guys later. Thank you. Oh, fire!